Hi, everyone. Let's get started. Today, we're going to talk about the Radwin multi-sector series, a great new product from uh, Radwin. And uh, well, let's get started. This is Craig Muller, the Director of Professional Services here in North America. We're going to talk about the multi-sector series highlights, uh, the product uh, per product. We're going to talk about the offering introduction, the benefits, the typical applications. The highlights of the multi-sector is that it is a 1.5 gig dual carrier self-contained base station series. It supports up to four sectors covering 360 degrees. Uh, it supports both an integrated and a connectorized model. Uh, the two models that are available are the connector eyes, which are great for uh, long range applications uh, where the antenna selection is very flexible, as well as an integrated solution, which is great for short range micro pop type applications. The main benefits that we see with this product is a reduced vertical asset TCO. You know, this really does chop down your total cost of ownership from the get go. Uh, saving you money, uh, which is always great. It's going to also save you on site ancillary components, uh, as well as the installation efforts. So you're installing uh, two sectors at once, uh, reducing your tower complexity. The connectorized version uh, looks as viewed there on the right, very compact. You can see it has uh, eight N type connectors down at the bottom. It is 1.5 gig of aggregate capacity out of this. It is a dual carrier. There are two radios inside of this chassis. It is self-contained and highly compact. As you can see, you have the, uh, the N-type pairs for four MIMO antennas, okay? That can be sectorial or directional. You can support up to 128 subscriber units, so 64 on each radio. You can support uh, both SLA and best effort services. This is the pro revision of our radios, okay? It'll support either one of those. Uh, it'll also support an optional self backhaul functionality that we'll talk about here in a minute. And of course, all the regulations listed, UNI, ETSI, FCC, IC, WPC. Uh, I'm assuming you're looking uh, or hearing me from FCC land. So the 5.8 and the 5.1 are supported on this. The list price of this product is $2,500. Again, self-contained uh, base station that reduces site complexity with dual radios. Built-in layer two switch for carrier traffic aggregation. A built-in GPS receiver and antenna, just like the jet radio. Uh, you don't need an external cable or an external hockey puck or anything external. It is all integrated inside of this unit. Uh, PoE or SFP for your WAN connectivity, uh, powered via a single uh, PoE device. Uh, and, and that's uh, also great. You, again, two radios uh, inside of this chassis. This platform supports reuse of two, uh, frequency reuse of two per site. The connectorized version uh, enables you to uh, have an optional self backhaul. All right, the self backhaul, the highlights of uh, the story here uh, is it is sharing the multi-sector radios capacity with one of the sectors, okay? So whichever uh, unit is uh, 180 degrees opposed to that uh, is the unit that will be sharing uh, that, that sector's capacity only requires a directional antenna and the remote sites backhaul unit is an SU Pro. So um, the subscriber unit is at the macro site, uh, the device at the multi-sector site, the multi-sector unit itself will be acting as a base station. Okay, so imagine uh, the scenario there that I am using that as the backhaul to the macro to feed this location. We'll look at this a little bit more in the next slide. The benefits of this are, are enormous. Uh, you save on a dedicated radio unit uh, for backhaul. I don't have to put a 2000 D plus or another backhaul option in place here. Uh, 
uh, avoids self-interference between the axis and the back, the back hull, which is also huge. Looking at this a little more closely here, I have uh, a 360 degree ring. Uh, looking at uh, basically half of the 360 degrees, I have sector A and I have sector B. If I look at my table there to the right, I have multi-sector carrier, uh, which has radio in parentheses number one, which is running a 40 megahertz uh, channel bandwidth. Uh, with that, I'm going to generate approximately 300 meg of aggregate capacity. I'm going to set 200 meg of that and aside for that self backhaul link as shown here between the multi-sector unit and the SU Pro. And I'm gonna leave 100 meg for sector connectivity. So the last mile connectivity to the households, I'm gonna leave at 100 meg, which makes sense when I look at sector B, uh, the other radio, uh, I'm only running a 20 megahertz carrier on that and generating about 100 meg. Uh, and so I'm using that uh, 100 meg off of sector A, 100 meg off of sector B, and I'm using the backhaul to bring that back to my macro site. So the flexibility and the benefits uh, you get with this are the external antenna selection uh, per sector. So you can pick what you want to connect to this unit. Obviously, you have to uh, you know, deal with the EIRP limits uh, uh, yourself when you're putting that information in, but it really doesn't matter. You know, we sell a wide variety of sectorial and point-to-point -point antennas. We'd love to uh, talk to you about that, but it uh, really does leave it up to you. Uh, it reduces the site complexity uh, and the total cost of ownership. Again, that optional self-backhaul, uh, saving you a point-to-point -point radio, and the frequency reuse of two. Again, regardless of the antenna performance, uh, you'll be able to use frequency reuse of two. And the radio carry resources are shared by two uh, antennas on the TDMA base station. All right. Multi-sector connectorized applications. You know, the, again, the lower total cost of ownership uh, for long range multiple sector sites with the demand for flexibility, you know, long range rural connectivity, rural towns, uh, vertical applications like video surveillance connectivity in safe cities, port, ports, oil and gas and mining. Again, little, you know, rural, and that looks a little more than a rural environment. Uh, that I grew up in, but uh, uh, you know, you'll get the point. Secure coverage uh, using a single, single multi-sector. So I can put up a single radio, all right, and I can break that into basically four 90 degree sectors because it is a connectorized unit, all right. I'm using two radios. That means I'm sharing my resources across two different sectors. Okay, so I have 1.5 giga aggregate capacity that I'm sharing across four different sectors, but splitting in and out. Seamlessly adding capacity by adding an additional multi-sector active unit. So there's my second unit. Now I have three gig of aggregate capacity. Now I'm breaking out uh, uh, two antennas per radio chassis. F1, F2, doing my frequency reuse. Again, Video surveillance, uh, it is a small compact unit. Uh, you can use very small patch antennas. It can be very, uh, very invisible, right? There's, there's even cubes that are built specifically to support this technology. The integrated unit. The integrated units uh, is, is pretty cool. Uh, it is a, a mod kind of a modular unit uh, is the way I'll say that, uh, a molded unit, it's 180 degrees. It's also 1.5 gig dual carrier. Uh, really this was built with micro pop applications in mind. Uh, it does include the connectors for your additional uh, external antennas. All the regulatory uh, factions are listed there. Two different models, we have a list price model uh, that'll support 16 subscriber units, up to 16 units per base station. Okay, that is 1,500. And then we have the one that'll support up to 128. That's two by 64. Again, two radios, right? Uh, left hand, right hand, uh, right hand, left hand, $2,500 list. Self-contained base station, again, really does reduce your site uh, complexity. 
dual five gigahertz radios inside of this unit. Uh, each radio carrier traffic is shared in time between two different uh, antennas. You know, slightly different than uh, what we do with uh, you know our jet antennas today, where everybody's transmitting and receiving at the same exact time. These two radios that are using the same frequencies are going to split that time. So only one of those will be transmitting at any given time. Uh, it's quite revolutionary. Uh, it comes with uh, 13 DBI, 90 degree integrated antennas, the dual TNC connectors uh, at the bottom for the external antennas. Again, it has the built-in switch that I just mentioned for the carrier traffic aggregation. Built-in GPS, just like the connectorized version I just showed, SFP PoE ports, again, single PoE required uh, per base station unit to power it. The antenna, this is the, um, what I'll call a shell, okay? There's no active components inside of this, okay? Uh, this is $500 list. This is, I can put these two together, the active component unit, uh, the multi-sector, and the associated antenna to cover 360 degrees using two radios, okay? $500 list, and you can see that uh, in action here. You know, they made up together with our standard base station mounting hardware quite nicely. Uh, very tight and compact, uh, you know, back to back to each other. 1.5 gig per tower. Uh, again, expandable to the three gig. So when we add uh, a second active unit, again, pay as you go uh, for real here. Uh, when I need to add uh, that additional uh, 1.5 gig of capacity, I'm gonna change out the shell for another active uh, unit. And that will increase uh, everything that I'm doing, you know, from 1.5 gig uh, to three gig, up to 256 uh, supportable subscriber units from 128. Um, again, I can, uh, you know, put on optional uh, external antennas for longer ranges. Uh, optional self backhaul for saving that point to point. And the immunity to interference thanks to the sectorial versus Omni. You see a lot of folks out there today that would wanna use Omnis, you know, because, you know, it makes sense, right? When you look at it on paper, it's one radio, it's one antenna, and that's it. Uh, in reality, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you get, to, you know, real large or any distance at all. Um, and you're taking interference from all, all comers, right? So this is a great platform for that. Highly scalable, you know, capacity versus coverage. Uh, just to reiterate what I just said verbally, uh, here I am with four sectors. I have the multi-sector base station and the antenna, the unit I referred to as the shell. Um, 16 to 128 subscriber units can be supported by this configuration. I can go to three gig of aggregate capacity, four 90 degree sectors, the same four 90 degree sector coverage as I had in the previous uh, vertical column, except I now have two active components, two multi-sector base stations that can support from 32. Uh, remember we start off with a, you know, a little skinny guy that'll do 16 subscriber units up to only, right? Uh, but the reality is you can do you know, much, much more. Uh, the last uh, picture that you see here is the external uh, antenna option. So I can break out uh, you know, a one foot flat panel, get a nice 10 degree beam uh, you know, that I can uh, uh, utilize. I can put a different sector antenna. I can put horns on this uh, unit, uh, whatever you want to put on it. Uh, it's left up to your imagination. Again, frequency reuse of two, only two channels are required to support your multi uh, base station site. Antenna F1, F1, you see 180 degrees opposed to each other. The same principles that uh, you know we've talked about for many years here at Radwin. They're gonna transmit F1. And then my F2 antennas are the two uh, different azimuths. And you see those in red. The multi-sector integrated unit uh, capacity versus range performance. Again, 
Uh, this is in kilometers uh, for us uh, North American Americans. Uh, in kilometers, five kilometers is the uh, the distance there. You know, so you know I liken this, uh, you know, to cover those uh, areas where you're getting around a corner, utilizing the self backhaul, picking up those five clients that uh, otherwise are shrouded in foliage or you know an obstacle you must get around. Of course, remember when you are cabled uh, back to the shell, cabled to uh, any other external um, units, you are gonna have a little uh, lower performance due to any you know, RF cable loss between uh, uh, the main unit and your antenna. So looking uh, at the optional backhaul, again, self backhaul shares the multi-sector capacity with one of the sectors. So. Uh, depending on which uh, set of cable ports you're utilizing, uh, it'll be matched up with one of the active radios uh, in the 180 degree form factor. Okay, so it's going to share those resources. It's going to act again just like a base station, you know, as far as the transmit and receive timing goes. Uh, it only requires a directional antenna. Again, the other side is this SU Pro. Uh, it must be an SU Pro version. Again, we're gonna save on dedicated radio units. I don't have to spend money uh, for that licensed radio, for instance. Again, voiding self-interference between access and backhaul. Uh, and again, that is really done through, you know, a revolutionary new transmission scheme that allows us to bring these active components very, very close to each other. So again, looking at uh, a very similar uh, diagram as we saw for the connectorized version, Again, we're, we're expecting uh, 180 degrees of coverage here uh, with the main unit, but then we've added the, the backhaul unit. So we've got a one foot uh, flat panel uh, that's talking to, again, a one foot uh, subscriber unit, uh, the SU Pro integrated, for instance. And I'm gonna split it up exactly as I did with the connectorized. I'm gonna use a larger channel size uh, to generate more aggregate capacity on one of these radios where I have the need. Uh, and I'm going to utilize, you know, two thirds of that for my self backhaul uh, to support not only, you know, the sector A carrier, but also the sector B carrier traffic. Okay. In this case, you know, we are showing only a hundred meg of, uh, of need there, right? Uh, of course, that could be a little bit higher. Um, and we, we need to uh, you know, account for that. When it comes uh, in the boxes, and uh, it's one of the things uh, that I really like about Radwin, uh, is our boxing technology has really come a long way. Uh, and it's very simple to open our boxes and you get basically just what you need. No extra fluff. Multi-sector base packages you see on the left side. This is the active component unit, uh, the 180 degree molded uh, device. Uh, you get the ODU, our standard mounting kit, and the mounting kit for the multi-sector antenna. When you purchase the multi-sector antenna package, you get the actual antenna itself, the standard mounting kit, and the four cables that you need. Uh, as you see on the right-hand side, uh, you have the basic mounting hardware, which should look very familiar to anybody that has installed a Radwin base station or integrated subscriber it is the same exact hardware. And then look at uh, what I'm doing here with the MS cable antenna uh, installation down at the bottom. So carrier one, 180 degrees opposed to each other. Uh, notice that they are, uh, that green arrow is indicating that the carrier one uh, RF ports uh, reside on the opposite side of the unit, not underneath the actual antenna itself, which makes it nice, right? Because you're cabling straight across uh, to the, uh, the opposite 180 degree opposing unit instead of trying to crisscross or anything like that. So the appearances of the RF uh, make sense. All right, the applications for the multi-sector, again, I think there's a lot of uh, things that we're not even going to touch on uh, and you can get quite imaginative. You know, covering residentials uh, in you know, off-grid rural areas, right? Uh, it, it's really about getting around the foliage. I think uh, you know, those of you that have tried other frequency bands recently, you know, realize that uh, 
you're going to need them all. You know, that's my standard answer to anybody who asks, well, what frequency should I use? All of them. Okay. And this is a great tool for that. Uh, the micro pop, uh, you know, covering a shadowed area, you know, your macro location, uh, you know, it's going to cover the majority or should cover the majority of your coverage area. But uh, again, we're always going to have uh, challenges with terrain. We're always going to have challenges with man-made objects and trees. Uh, and this will allow you to get around those things uh, with a little planning, a little bit of thinking, and uh, you know, a little bit of money, right? Because it's very cost effective. So you see your macro pop, and then you're coming over the hill for your micro pop to pick up the, uh, the lesser amount of clients. Again, putting my multi-sector uh, in an area with uh, you know, clustered rural areas, uh, top of the hill, you know, coming in from another macro site. And I think if I look real close to, to the left ridge there, I see my macro site uh, sitting on top of that ridge. Oil and gas, you know, great for you know, video monitoring, telemetry, uh, remote site connectivity. And then against our competition, uh, you know, everybody wants uh, you know, to compete for the micro pop and we went a little bit farther. We're not only talking about a micro pop, but we're also talking about a multi-sector uh, deployment so using the connectorized unit. So we're giving a lot of flexibility here. Uh, comparing that to the EPMP 3000L, uh, you know, when we're doing two uh, sector sites, you know, we're a little less expensive than them. But really, the, the, the cost uh, really goes up for them at four sectors, where it makes us much more attractive and a much more powerful solution at the four sector site. Again, that's two devices for us uh, to support that. All right, thank you very much. I know that uh, I probably have some questions. Uh, let me take a look uh, and see what type of PO is this unit, how many watts? So this is our high powered unit. Uh, our recommendation is you're using our, our higher powered PoE that uh, was just released for the Duo. Uh, they are integrated passive antennas for this, Josh. Okay, they are not beam forming units, uh, not today anyway. Um, I think that's something that uh, we may see in the future, uh, but as of today, uh, these are integrated passive 13 dBi antennas. Correct. As far as the spacing goes, um, it, it, much closer than the jet radios, uh, to be sure. Uh, thank you, James, and I uh, hope you're well. Uh, much closer, okay? And, and it has to do with the way that the transmissions are timed. Uh, more than anything else. Um, as far as the integrated unit, uh, the electronic down tilt, James, I don't know. Uh, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Um, and if anybody from my team is listening, text me the answer. Uh, but I'll take a look, James, on the, I'm sure it's on the data sheet. I just haven't looked at it uh, before this and uh, we'll go from there. Let's see what else we have. Backwards compatible uh, to subscriber units, absolutely. Uh, all of our base stations to talk to all of our subscriber units. Carrier one and carrier two beyond the same part of the band. That's a, that is a good question, Josh. And it is one that I had earlier today. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get to find my answer. I was on a rooftop or most of it, but I will uh, absolutely look at that. So just to clarify, you're wanting to know whether or not I can run the same channel, uh, whether there's an overlap uh, stopping you from uh, reusing or overlapping frequencies. I'm assuming that's your question. All right, let's take a look here. Importance of the 180 degree separation, most of our locations will not allow. Uh, so the question is uh, whether or not the back-to-back -back, uh, separation, uh, more is fine, okay? Again, if you are using uh, the non-active antenna component, 
you do get jumpers with it. They're meant to, uh, to be of the same length as the back-to-back -back mounting scenario as shown. So anything that you do outside of that mounting scenario will require uh, you to provide those in, uh, jumpers. You also need to calculate uh, you know, the loss of those jumpers. Again, uh, the more loss, the less performance you're gonna see out of that backside. Yes, absolutely. This uh, presentation will be made available and uh, typically it's uh, made available a day or two uh, from now. How much of the pros capacity will it grab? I'm not sure I understand the question, Dave, but uh, if I let me guess here, if you want to try to clarify while I'm guessing, uh, are you talking about the self backhaul that can be, um, you can decide based on, you know, how much capacity you have available in my questions. Um, thank you, Josh. I'll follow up with you, uh, you know, afterwards and uh, um, we'll send out the uh, list of questions and answers to everyone as well. Up to max, yes, uh, yes, up to max. I don't know the percentage you can actually do uh, as far as, you know, I, I would imagine you can do 80% if you wanted to, uh, dedicated to your backhaul. But uh, I'll take a look at that and uh, let you know on that day. Uh, five, eight and five, one, Jim, uh, for um, today. The future, you know, you're asking me about six gigahertz uh, in the future. Uh, I'm not gonna say no on this product, but uh, my guess is there's a lot of things gonna happen between now and then. Ah, committed information rate, yes. Uh, I think you can, you, could, you can make it pretty high, Dave. Uh, you could CIR that, uh, you know, as much as you wanted to. Okay, uh, any other questions? This was my first Zoom. Uh, same software management, so yes. Yes, it is a web, sorry Dave, it is a web management device just like uh, the Duo. Uh, so you'll be accessing this unit via uh, the web and uh, same revision of code as the Duo as a matter of fact. Uh, there'll be a new version out uh, 5.0.70 imminently. So, up. Oh, somebody else got something in on me at the last second. No? Nope. All right. Thank you, everybody. I hope everybody is safe and well. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out to your regional sales directors, your regional professional services, your prof your sales engineer from Radwin. We're here to help you uh, and uh, be safe. We'll talk to you all soon. Thank you.